In this example, we're going to take a look at just how to set up and get started on a problem using the simplex method. So when we take a look at the problem, we have to determine if it's a standard maximization problem so that we know what process to solve it. So the first criteria is that the objective function is maximized, that one is met. The next criteria is that all of our variables are non-negative, that criteria is met. And finally, the third and last criteria that must be met is that all of the constraints in the problem have less than or equal to signs. That is met. So, the first step after we've determined that this is a standard maximization problem is to um, create a system of equations based on the original problem. So, what we need to do in the first constraint, the constraints are written after subject 2, is we need to rewrite this constraint, negative 2x1 plus 3x2, and we need to add a slack variable. I'm going to call it u. And what the slack variables do is that they make up for this inequality portion here. So by adding a u here, I'm going to be able to write equals 9. And you can't quite see that, so let me scooch it over just a little bit. There we go. Now, in the second constraint, we'll have to add a second slack variable. So I'm going to write negative x1 plus 3x2 plus v, and that makes the less than or equal to 12 turn into an equals 12. And then the last part is that we need to take the objective function and move all of the variables onto the left-hand side. I'm trying to scoot this over so I get a good enough view here. There we go. So I need to subtract 6x1 and 3x2 from both sides of the objective function. And when I do that, what I'm left with is negative 6x1 minus 3x2 plus my objective variable p equals 0 because there's nothing left on the right hand side after those variables get crossed out. So um, if you notice the way that I set up my system of equations here is that I put all the x1's in their own column, I put all the x2's in their own column, I made a separate column for u, v, and p. Even though they're kind of squeezed in here, you can see that they each have their own column. So from this system of equations, I need to make my initial simplex tableau. And you can't see that. I wrote system of equations over there. So I need to make my initial simplex tableau. So all I'm going to do is recopy the system of equations without any of the variables, just writing the coefficients. So my first row will be negative 2, 3, 1, and these correspond to x, y, u, v, p, and the constants on the right-hand side. <clears throat> so there is no v or p in this first equation, and then the right-hand side is 9. Okay, moving on to the second equation in my system, I have negative 1, 3, there's no u term, but there is 1 v, no p, and a 12 on the right-hand side. And typically we write a dashed line underneath our constraints to denote that we are separating the constraints from the objective function, which has coefficients of negative 6, negative 3, no slack variables, a objective function variable, and the 0 on the right-hand side. So by putting the vertical line in place of the equal signs and making square brackets around here, I've created my initial simplex tableau. Alright, so if you're in my class, then you should, you might want to enter this as a matrix in your calculator, but before we even get to that step, we need to determine what the pivot element is. The first step in selecting a pivot element is to find the most negative value in the bottom row. 
So the most negative value in this bottom row here is a negative 6. That tells me that the pivot column, because negative 6 is in column 1, the pivot column is column 1. And then the next step, once you identify the pivot column, is to take the values on the right-hand side and divide them by the entries in the pivot column to get a non-negative quotient. However, 9 divided by negative 2 is negative 4 and a half. 12 divided by negative 1 is negative 12. And we need non-negative quotients in this procedure. So since we can't find any non-negative quotients by using this method, the simplex method breaks down and we see that there is no optimal solution. In the next couple of videos you will see the simplex method carried out completely but like I said in the beginning I just wanted to show you how to set up the problem. You have to take the inequalities, turn them into equalities by adding slack variables, one for each uh, constraint, and then rewrite the objective function with all the variables on the left hand side. From that system of equations, you set up your initial simplex tableau and try to find the first pivot element. Look for more videos.